Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Ryan Gertzma, and I'm Robin Basselin. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand, no matter where in the world they live. Youssef Bougrara lives in the country of Morocco. He is a tour guide. He leads people on trips to visit Morocco's important cultural places. One day, Bougrara was driving in the desert. He met two young boys. Bougrara began to talk with the boys. He learned that they were members of a nomadic desert tribe. Their tribe does not have permanent homes. Instead, they move around and live in tents. Bugrara also learned that the boys did not know how to read or write. This shocked Bugrara. He believed all children should have the right to education, so he decided to help. Now, his tour company gives part of their profits to support the education of nomadic children. But Bugrara and many others have learned that money. Is only part of the solution to educating nomadic children. Over the years, governments have tried many different policies to educate nomadic children, but the most successful efforts involve teachers who are willing to live a nomadic way of life. Today's spotlight. Is on efforts to bring education to the children of nomadic tribes. From a young age, nomadic tribes educate their children. They teach them about their culture and way of life. For example, young boys learn how to raise animals in different climates and seasons. Girls learn how to manage the process of moving and living in tents. The skills are complex, and this traditional education is very important. But literacy is becoming more and more important, even for nomadic people. Today, knowing how to read and write is the base of education and communication. If nomads are not literate, they lack power to connect with the rest of the world. For example. Governments make written policies that affect nomadic tribes. If nomads cannot read or write, they often have no influence on the policy-making process. Literacy can also help nomadic tribes gain information about new technology that can help them improve their lives. However, there are many things that make it difficult to teach nomadic children how to read and write. Most methods of education operate during a set period of time. They begin and end at particular times of the year. 
These methods usually require the use of a school building and teaching supplies. But these methods do not work well for nomadic communities. The greatest barrier to educating nomadic children is child labor. Nomadic children work every day. Their families depend on them to help continue their nomadic way of life. And the subjects students learn in school often do not seem important to the nomadic way of life. So, how can children spend their day in school? When their families depend on their skills, in the past, governments have tried many different efforts to bring literacy to nomadic tribes. Some governments have forced nomadic tribes to settle in villages. Then, children from the tribe can attend village schools. However, this method damages the tribe's nomadic way of life. Other governments have tried building residential schools for nomadic children. At these schools, children from nomadic tribes live far away from their families. They often do not see their parents for long periods of time. The children learn how to read and write, but they are removed from their tribe and way of life. More recently, some governments have tried new methods of mobile learning. With mobile learning. Education is not limited to a particular place. Governments can broadcast literacy programs over the radio, and nomadic students can listen wherever they are. Another form of mobile education sends teachers to travel with the nomadic tribes. This method is particularly successful. However, it requires very special teachers. In the Middle East and North Africa, nomadic tribes often live in extreme desert climates, and travel to and from these locations is often very difficult. In the country of Jordan, there are nomadic tribes called Bedouin. One teacher has sacrificed much to serve this community. His name is Muhammad Al Damania. Al Damania has lived and traveled with Bedouin tribes for many years. And he has taught several generations of Bedouin children to read. Al Damania does not receive money for teaching. Instead, he depends on the Bedouin to provide for his needs. Al Damania admits that this method of teaching is difficult. He teaches in a tent. He often lacks supplies, and every three months he travels with the Bedouin to find food and water for their animals. The climate is very hot; conditions are extremely difficult, and Al Damania does not have a home or any modern devices. But Al Damania does have successful and thankful students. Al Damania 
only has a high school education. He did not go to university. But his teaching has helped his students set and achieve high goals. Al Kubul Abutea is a former student. He talked with Al Jazeera about Al Damania's work. He has really helped the people here. His students have gone to universities and into the military. One of his students is even getting a PhD now. Afash Amamre is another teacher who has taught Bedouin children in Jordan. His school is called the Bayir Tent Project. Amamre grew up as a Bedouin, but his father wanted him to learn how to read and write. Suha Maaya is a writer. She talked with Amamre about his work. Maaya told Spotlight. It was a chance incident that led to Amamra's education. His father made a mistake. He thought a toilet door was an office door because he could not read the sign. The incident made his father so angry that he decided his son would learn to read. Am Amra did learn to read and write, and now he is serving his Bedouin community. Through the Bayer Tent Project, more than 400 Bedouin children have learned to read. Many of them have attended university. Am Amre told Ma'ea, we want to produce a new generation of people who can change their lives for the better. Educating children from nomadic communities is a difficult issue. But the most successful efforts involve sacrifice. When teachers work with the nomadic way of life, the children succeed. And they will have a greater influence in their future and the future of their people. The writer of this program was Jen Hawkins. The producer was Michio Osaki. The voices you heard were from the United States and the United Kingdom. All quotes were adapted and voiced by Spotlight. You can listen to this program again and read it on the Internet at www.radioenglish.net. This program is called Teaching in Tense. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.